Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to give you guys a brief update on my 2020 locality boa breeding trials. As you know, I had my first litter of the season last week, a litter of some baby hog island boas. So we'll check out on how those little guys are doing. We'll take a look at my gravid females. And I'm also going to say a little bit about my sales terms, just in case you've been thinking about acquiring one of my babies. So let's go take a quick look at the Hog Island Boas right now. Let's take a look at my baby Hog Island Boas. They're now a little over a week old. And as you can see, I'm still keeping them in a simple tub, just with some paper towels as a substrate and some crumpled paper towels to hide under and then some uh, a little dish of water here. And you can see they're kind of piling up in the corner. That's what they usually do. Um, so usually I just let them stay with each other for about a week to 10 days just before they shed for the first time. And then I remove them to individual um, six liter Sterilite tubs. So it's, I, someone actually asked me, you know, can you remove the babies right away to the individual tubs? And I think this would be okay, but I think there's, they enjoy each other's company. They enjoy kind of piling up. So I generally let them do it for at least the first week. So I think in nature, it's possible that they will stay together after they're born. And this might offer them a survival advantage because when you think about it, if you have a pile of baby boas and a predator comes, it might get one of them, but the rest will get away. So it's kind of an insurance policy. If you have a lot of them together in a confined space, odds are that you know most of them will be able to get away from the predator. There's another little guy over here. You can see I have a heat mat set to about 90 degrees. You can see that baby. These are some really nice babies. The colors are a little bit dull now. They'll look a hell of a lot better right after they shed. It's always amazing how much better they look after shedding. Um, so, so far so good with these babies and once they shed, I'll offer them their first meal and hopefully they'll eat pretty soon and start to get established. Now I want to check in on the mother of the Hog Island litter, see how she's doing. So there you can see her and as you can see, she's gone into shed. The mothers will typically shed about 10 days or so after the litters are born. So she should shed in the next day or two. I gave her a medium sized rat the day after she was born, which she chowed down really uh, vigorously. And then I fed her a large rat about a week later. So typically after a female gives birth, I'll feed her at a uh, increased feeding frequency schedule just for the few months ahead of her litter, basically to the uh, winter cooling period. Just want to put some more of that weight back on her. And, you know, she'll recover in no time back to her uh, her weight, her normal weight. And uh, she, of course, next year she has the year off. I'm not going to breed her again. If things go well, we'll pair her up again in the 2021 to 2022 breeding season and hopefully some more babies in 2022. Here's a look at the last female that I was holding out for, for hopefully a litter in this 2020 breeding season. This is my boa constrictor longicata, long tail boa female. And I'm not quite sure what happened. I don't think she's gravid. And her and the male were together for around six months. And I noticed quite a bit of, of what appeared to be copulatory activity. They were tail to tail quite often. And I even saw the male with his tail in the air wiggling, you know, a number of times, which is really a good sign. But she just doesn't look gravid and she's not acting gravid. So I don't think I'm going to get any BCL this year, unfortunately. But we'll pair her up again next year. You know, this, these ones are about five years old, so they're still a little young. But hopefully next year should be more successful and keeping my fingers crossed uh, for BCL next year. Let's have a quick look at my Suriname True Red Helboa, who is gravid. And she's been pretty much just hanging out over her hot spot. She's gotten a little bit bigger. You know, her abdomen is just swelling a little bit. I'm not going to disturb her too much. Just let me move her hide so you, maybe you can see her a little better. But she's really swelling up, especially about two-thirds of the way down her body. You can really see 
the swelling that hopefully are some real nice developing babies. But this one, she'll probably uh, give birth sometime around mid or early to mid September, I'm guessing. But with BCC, it's sometimes hard to tell, and sometimes they give birth a little bit later than would be suggested by the post ovulation shed, maybe a couple weeks after the, what the date would be suggested. But we'll see what happens with her. Really hopeful on this one. You know, she's a beautiful animal. It's also one of the cool things about this litter is this is my first F1 cross with two animals born here at Brian Boas. And now we'll have the next generation of true red tails, hopefully on the ground in a couple months. So please stay tuned for updates on this one. Another true red tail that I've got grabbed right now. It's one of my most anticipated litters this year. This is my Pacalpa Peruvian female. And she's mostly just been hanging out coiled on top of the hot spot, much as she is now. You know, she doesn't move around very much. Just kind of lies there in a tight coil to conserve the heat for her babies. Hot spot is set to about 90, 91 degrees. And her abdomen is looking a little bit bigger. You know, I try to disturb her as little as possible. I only remove a gravid female from the enclosure if absolutely necessary, especially when they're getting closer to their due date. So she's got probably about another month and a half or so to two months. I expect that she'll hopefully give birth in early to mid-September. And it'd be really great if this was successful. You know, I mentioned before that I had a, I tried to breed this female the first time two years ago and just got some slugs. And hope, hoping for better luck this year, which was with a different male, who actually a male that was born here in 2015. And I think, you know, he was a better match for her. So fingers crossed on this one. But uh, please stay tuned. And as the day gets closer, we'll see how she's looking. But she's looking pretty thick right now. So hopefully there's lots of real nice babies developing in there. So this is the next female that I expect to give birth. This is a Kwaki female. And she's probably due in about two, well, she's due in about two weeks. So... We'll see when the babies come but you can see she's looking really big you can see she's kind of coiled on her side and her abdomen is really distended of course i'm not going to touch her because i don't want to disturb her but she's really looking big you know so hopefully we have some nice babies developing in there this female is um, pretty big for a quality she's probably about five and a half feet her mate was only about three and a half feet, one of the smallest adult males I have in my collection. And hoping for some nice ones. She's, this will be her, I believe, fourth litter. She had one litter with me three years ago and she had a couple litters before I got her. But a really nice example of the Qualki Dwarf Boa from Belize. I wanted to be sure and show you guys one of the expectant Boa fathers. And this is a Kwaki Boa. This guy is a 2013 baby, so he's about seven years old, produced by my good buddy Michael Beach. And he's really a charming little boa. He's maybe not quite four feet long, you know, very manageable size, enjoyable to take out and handle, just a really cool animal. He's actually in shed right now. Normally he has a much brighter, more silvery coloration. But his colors are unfortunately a little bit muted now, but he'll look a lot nicer after he sheds. And he's, of course, the one that I paired up with that big female, Qual Kiboa. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I should have some babies in the next couple weeks from these two. So I also wanted to say a little bit about my sales terms because a lot of you guys have been inquiring. And I don't do waiting lists. People have been asking about waiting lists. But for several reasons, I don't do waiting lists. It's a first come, first serve uh, basis. So please stay tuned for the future videos and I'll give you regular updates on my baby boa availability. I imagine I'll list babies for sale on Fauna Classifieds and possibly Facebook as well. And I'll put a link to videos in the future where you can directly go to my Fauna Classifieds and you can check out 
what animals I have available. But it's going to be a little while. Those hog island babies at the earliest would probably be about a month and a half from now that they would be available. So please stay tuned. Please be patient. These babies will be available eventually. But I just want to make sure that they're really well established and perfectly healthy so they'll have the best chance of thriving in your collection. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, reach out to me if you have any questions about boas or you know, my boas in particular. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.